Hi, welcome to episode number three of the six part course on um, AMQP 1.0. And in this part, I want to talk about message transfers. Message transfers um, happen over links. So we've established the notion of links in the previous session. And uh, there's uh, two fundamental ways of how transfers happen. They happen settled or unsettled. A settled message sent is a fire and forget. That means here's a message that I'm going to send you and I never want to hear about it again because for me it's settled. I, I'm going to go and give that to you. I'm going to put it on the wire and going to delete it from my buffer. That's what that says. So there's no reply that's being sent by the receiver on that message. And if the message, if the receiver cannot handle the message, if it has an error, it will not go and give you anything back. It's the fastest because there's no feedback. Um, but also the lossiest potentially way of sending messages over AMQP certainly is the cheapest because uh, there's no extra traffic associated with it. So that's the at most ones model, if you will. Then there's the at least ones transfer model where you require settlement and the settlement is happening through um, a um, by setting on the transfer settled faults and then you get a reply that says disposition and the disposition then will say, yes, we have just settled and then also communicates the state, which I'm going to get to. The way the transfer works is you send a transfer um, frame, a transfer data element, which we're going to learn about how that looks and how those things are encoded um, uh, in a later session. So you send a transfer data element expressed in MQP, which contains all the parameters that I, that I show here. And uh, then following that frame, following that preamble is the payload body that's being sent, the exact format of the transfer frame you're going to see towards the end um, in um, the sixth module, um, because that is kind of at the tail end of all the encoding di discussion. And those message transfers um, result in a particular delivery state. So you transfer the message over using a transfer frame. You say it's not settled and you have an initial state of null, um, which means there is no outcome for this, uh, for this uh, operation yet. The receiver receives it, and if there is a requirement for settlement, the receiver will now process that message and, can, and will go answer with that disposition frame. The disposition frame has effectively four options. Accepted, everything is okay. Rejected, something happened. The inbound message was bad, um, or the sender could not, the receiver could not deal with that message. It could not store it. There was an error that was happening. So there's error information included in the rejected um, response that's included in that uh, trans disposition frame. There, it might be released. The sender, the receiver got the message, but it timed out when it was trying to do the work or for some other reason, it can't deal with that message right now. So the message is just being released, which means the sender is now, and now it's for the sender. It's now okay to go and re-deliver that message again to that same sender, to the same receiver, or to another receiver that's uh, also asking for messages concurrently from the same messaging entity. And then there's modified, which is effectively a release, but also carries information for the message, like manipulations on that message, um, changes to that message back to the client, and the client is now free to go and take those edits that are being made to that message and apply that to that. Um, message. There's one intermediary state that th that's defined and that's the received state and that received state is important for repairing links. That's here so when we have a so we're transferring messages and as and between effectively sending that message and receiving the disposition frame the connection now cuts um, with at least once you know, settled transfers the most messages will get lost um, if uh, the connection drops while they're being transferred um, if that happens to you when um, a um, when you have uh, uh, this handshake, when you have this position, when you have settlement required, then you can go and repair those links. So you create a new connection, you create a new session, and then you effectively attach the links with the knowledge you have about the messages you still have in memory. So the attaching client will go and say, I want to be the sender here but I have the, still the following messages I have in my buffer, and here are the states of those messages. So the first one is I don't know, I don't know, so I've sent them, but I haven't heard about them from you. The third is accepted, but we haven't, the third, I heard that you were accepted, but we haven't finally 
um, settled that yet. So I have not removed that yet from my, from my um, list. And the fourth one I haven't heard about. Then the, the receiver comes back and says, yes, I want to go and reestablish that link. So I still know about it. Um, sorry. And um, the first one I have released. So you have to go and send that again. The second one, I don't have no, no idea. So you, that may have gotten lost as we, uh, I have not seen that message at all. So you have to go and resend that. And the third one is indeed accepted so we can go and, uh, and make that message go away. So there's a negotiation that happens kind of during the link recovery to which now the states of all the messages that are still in the buffer are being uh, reconciled. And then in the, in the end, um, you are effectively resuming the transfers, by, uh, resuming the transfer and resuming the dispositions um, cleanly uh, by effectively clearing all the buffers out based on the now known state. So that's how link recovery works in AMQP. What you can also do um, with uh, those transfers, with those links, is you can model bidirectional communication very easily. You can model request response very easily. Um, for a request response relationship, the client. C here, initiates two links with a target node T, one in the role of a sender and one in the role of a receiver. Um, the target goes and accepts both of those. And now the client, the response node that the client has, so the, the response node where the, the, uh, the response comes in, that can be scoped to the conversation so that the client can go and create a node in, because it's just a virtual construct that's specific to the conversation or can be a global thing that is on some dispatch uh, and on some dispatcher. Um, depending on how you want to go, go do this, this is completely up to you. And the correlation between the request and the reply happens through the standardized message properties that are existing for the MQP messages. So um, you can set the correlation ID on the outbound message, and that's also being set on the inbound message. Or you can go and use um, the message ID and the correlation ID. So that's very easy and it's a standard mechanism that's already built into the MQP standard properties that you can go and use for this. So you can go and create duplex conversations which have no particular order of request reply. Um, or you can go and build a true request response model very, very easily on top of AMQP by building these links and using the correlation gestures um, that are built straight into the protocol. And that's uh, that for message transfers, foundations of uh, transfers and uh, disposition. And in the next session, we're, I'm going to talk about flow control management.